Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be looking at Tomato's Phantom Assassin. This is a hero I don't see picked a lot in the pro scene, but I definitely think it's a pretty okay pub hero. I say that, but I've definitely said in the past that I think it's the worst hero in the game, and I kind of stand by that. But at the same time, if all the conditions are met to make PA a good hero, well then maybe it's alright. And I definitely believe that PA's mid to late game, if it's a good PA game, is one of the strongest in the game, and that mostly comes down to Blur. So without further ado, let's quickly look through the draft. We're gonna look at Team Master versus TSM and see why in the world does TSM pick Phantom Assassin and let's get into it. Also, I wanna tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm gonna be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you wanna become absolutely broken, <laughs> but like actually you wanna become much, much better at Dota and you wanna take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is gonna help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm gonna help you get to the next rank and I'll see you there. All right, so starting off, there's actually two heroes PA is quite good against. You have the Enchantress and the Nature's Prophet. Neither of these heroes control PA at any point in the game. Maybe Sprout leashes from Nature's Prophet, but even then, PA is almost always going to have a battle theory. Shadow Demon also provides zero control for Phantom Assassin, and so immediately if you're Team TSM, you're thinking about heroes that have a lot of mobility because they just simply can't lock you down. This can be in the form of a Morphling, I could see a Phantom Assassin. Uh, I don't really like the idea of like life Stealer, because that's kited by Shadow Demon ulti. Even an Illusion hero could be pretty good against these three heroes. Maybe a Terrorblade or an Aga Siren. Okay, they actually banned out the Naga Siren, and Terrorblade got banned on the other side. So, interesting choice from both sides. I guess uh, Terrorblade's a little risky in the Shadow Demon, but that's, that matchup's okay. They go for the Pangolier on Team Master, which I like. It kind of covers these three heroes. All of them really struggle against heavy physical damage and these, like, mobile physical damage heroes, and Pango is arguably the best hero in the game at uh, dealing with those types of heroes. So, do like the Pangolo pick here quite a lot. Okay, and they actually do reserve Phantom Assassin for the last pick of the game, so they will know Phantom Assassin's lane. I guess not necessarily, right? Because Team Master certainly has the option to flex their lanes. Uh, they could put Pango mid and off, they could put Nature's Profit safe lane and off lane. Some teams have done it mid lane in the past as well. And I believe Team Master last picks the Dragonite here, once again, rounding out their lack of catch draft. So they picked the DK, so they truly have like infinite flex here. I mean, they could put these three heroes in any of the lanes that they want. So the DK could be mid against the Ember because uh, DK is an Ember mid counter. Yeah, maybe that's what they're going for. Maybe TSM is assuming, okay, this is probably Pango off lane. In which case, I know Phantom Assassin is very good against Pango off lane. And the reason why is Pango does not like getting pressure. This is a hero that needs levels to come online. And in the off lane, you don't really get those levels. It is, okay, I think XXS is the off in her, I think. I don't know, but either way, I like the pick of Phantom Assassin. A couple of reasons why. You have heroes to target in the team fight. You can blow up the Shadow Demon, you can blow up the Ench. You're a hero that also takes care of Ench. Your shard is incredibly good this game. You can break the Dragonite and you can break the Ench. Both heroes extremely valuable to pick up the shard on PA and break them at some point in the game. It's a big, big deal. Then from there, as I said, good targets in terms of the team fight, right? Jumping on Nature's Prophet, you're a very good hero against NP. You blow him up in the fights. Very good hero against Shadow Demon, good hero against Enchantress. Wouldn't necessarily say you're bad against Pango as you are a BKB carry and that's pretty good against Pango, right? It's nice to have a hero that doesn't like, for instance, something like Drow can struggle a little bit against Pango because she doesn't want to buy an early BKB unless she has to, right? And so you're going to lose damage on Drow if you have to buy early BKB against Pango. And so it doesn't feel nearly as good. But the Phantom Assassin, it, it wants to buy BKB no matter what. So it's nice. Also, the Shadow Demon ulti does very little against Phantom Assassin because Blink Strike means you won't get countered by a Shadow Demon's Demonic Purge. So in terms of the lane, wow, you could see immediately that he's going to be looking to go aggressive. And this makes sense because XXS is playing Pangolier. So this is the Pango offlane and Pango offlane. Trust me, guys, it's not a good laner like this hero. Yes, shield crash is an interesting ability in the laning stages. Are they going to get first blood too? Oh, they are. And Widemon got it. So the Pangolier's lane is going to be even harder now because this disruptor can just ship out as much regen as he wants, right? Probably a set of tangos in the south, uh, maybe even a stick, right? He has really a as much gold as he wants after that first blood to buy any regen that he wants. But yeah, Tomato opting for the Blightstone first, and you could see that's basically him saying, we're going to pressure, right? Pango's armor isn't that bad at four, neither is Enchat four, so I wouldn't say it's like the best Blightstone lane in the game, but 
no, it definitely makes sense. And Disruptor, you have so much kill potential with Disruptor Glimpse that I can totally see the Blightstone being good. So I'm going to keep it real, guys. I'm skipping ahead to the 830 Minimark to start off the video here. And really, this hero is very, very boring. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to pressure the Pango much at all. And it mostly came down to the fact that Enchantress is just too good of a hero. Impetus at level 1 is a ridiculous ability. But really, what I would like to focus on here is his mentality when it comes to farming. Because this is the key for heroes like Phantom Assassin. The problem with Phantom Assassin inherently as a hero is it's absurdly easy to gank. You might say, but speed! I have blur and bling strike. What are you talking about? Okay, Blink Strike is very predictable because you have to go to a creep. It's not like AM Blink where you have options. Uh, Blink Strike is very predictable. And Blur, it's like, okay, you can click Blur, but that doesn't mean you're like gonna be able to farm. For instance, here, they're just gonna take his tower, but I like what Tomato does. He gets off a small camp pull, which allows him to farm the small camp. It's actually quite a significant amount of gold. Then he's gonna head into the jungle. And really, this is what you do on PA. You just let the tower go. It is what it is, right? You just let the tower go. And that's kind of the problem with the hero. It's not like a Morphling where you could stall a little bit. You know what I mean? Like like a, a Morphling or maybe a Naga Siren in, in a good matchup. You can't really stall almost ever on PA. Maybe if you bought a Vanguard and it's like some Beastmaster or something, I, even then you probably can't stall. And so you just let it go. Now, honestly, this is why I think Aster should not take the tower immediately. I think it's like really low skill. I think it's something pros do wrong with the current way they look at the game. And it's something I'm probably going to implement into my game uh, as much as I can. But what they did is they just pushed in the lane to his tier two and he got to farm a free creep wave. What they could have done is they could have not taken the tower as fast because I really don't feel like they needed to. They didn't have to take the tower that fast and they could have side pulled. But it is what it is. And in your pubs, it's going to be the exact same thing, guys. It, it, in fact, it's going to be worse. They're not even going to contest the creep wave at all. They're not even going to think about pulling the lane. Like at least what I think Pango is going to do here is maybe he'll side pull. I don't know. But he should look to side pull. But in these games, you just get to kind of free farm. So he's going to end up leaving top now. Maybe he was afraid of getting wrapped on. I'm not exactly sure. But you're looking to take safe lane creeps. This hero cannot jungle for her life. It's not obviously you can. OK, <laughs> you might be like speed. Obviously, you can jungle. Your hero has built in lifesteal and attack speed and a crit. It's like, yeah, it's not terrible and you can do it, but it is not optimal at all. Lane creeps are worth way more. So he will head into the jungle here because currently there's no mid lane to take. There's no top lane. You're not just going to run to straight to bottom. And so he'll kill off uh, the large camp and then make his way towards bottom. He does end up bumping into an edge creep. So unfortunately, he's going to have to deal with that a little bit as he's going to click blur and look to farm the bottom wave. But because he's Phantom Assassin, he has to be extremely careful, right? He doesn't feel comfortable farming this at all because he doesn't know if, if DK is smoking. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if DK is smoking. Yeah, so DK has a blink. Uh, DK is not smoking, but he doesn't know that, right? And so he plays extremely passive, looking to just try to get to this comfortable 12, 13 minute battle fury, more so 13, maybe 13, 30 minute battle fury is oh, nice dagger to secure the creep. Um, probably will even end up selling his branches here just to try to speed up the timing. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised, but yeah, it kind of gets trapped here. And once again, I hate to reiterate what I was saying earlier, but your hero sucks at this point in the game. Like there's no way around it, but it's important to get that and really get that because if you don't get that, you're going to overplay your hand. You're going to take team fights you shouldn't take. And you're going to try to farm lanes that are way too dangerous. Where here, Tomato understands. I got to play passive. It is what it is. Honestly, he probably should have shifted his way into the jungle at this point and just farm the triangle. I think he got a little bit too greedy for lane creeps there. I definitely think uh, if he was to watch this gameplay back, he would probably agree with that at some point. You just got to click blur on the neutrals and slowly take it like lane creeps mega priority you could even see here like he's prioritizing daggering lane creeps over taking an ancient camp and that's because it's just way more gold eventually you'll hit his battle fury and with battle fury your hero starts to become a real hero because you can click blur and take the ancients when you click blur and take the ancients you actually get a lot of gold and that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to get a lot of gold. So yeah, you're going to play safe for a while. Not looking to take fights here. Just want to go to bottom. Doesn't even consider showing up to the spot side fight. His team is going to pop off though and win the fight without him. Very nice. This is going to click blur. Feeling a little bit afraid of the DK blink timing. So very nice to click blur, dagger the wave and play a little bit safe. Unfortunately, some of his camps are blocked here, but I guess he gained some confidence with white mon in the area on the disruptor. And so he's going to farm up the wave from there back to the triangle. And it's a simple rotation. You want to farm the bot side of the map because of how strong the ancients are for your overall efficiency. And so yeah, very, very easy. You push out the lane as fast as you can whenever it's safe, then you farm backwards. It's an easy idea, very simple to execute on, and it's going to make you a high level player if you just dodge the occasional gank. That's really the hardest part about PA gameplay at this point in the game. All right, and finally, you've become a Dota 2 hero. You can maybe play the game. 
If your team is losing, honestly, you should wait for Deso, but this game, his team is about even, and so when your team is about even and you get your 20 minute battle fury, which is, you know, what you should be aiming for. 20, 21 minutes is a solid timing to look for. Uh, it, it's then very good to show up to the fights because as I said, uh, this hero is a real hero with the BKB. You can actually do stuff as unfortunately he gets disarmed and can't even win the man fight to a Pangolier. Gotta love Phantom Assassin, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm such a hater. I hate to make a video on a hero and hate on it the entire time, but it is what it is. There's a reason why no one almost ever picks this hero at the pro level. Once again, you can still play it in pubs because you don't get punished as hard for the bad, generally bad laning stage and complete inability to farm anything dangerous. But <laughs> yeah, you just hit safe neutrals. And in this game, his team's able to do that. They're able to protect them and hit, well, safe neutrals. Eventually, they're going to pop a smoke here as he actually buys his shard as on Courier. As they're going to find the Enchantress, he'll jump in. It's good for him to jump the Ench in this game because his team, they can kill Ench without him because they have Primal and... Uh, uh, Death Prophet, but it's a little bit easier for him to just commit his low cooldowns and blow up the Ench. This is actually one of the carries that I think is good against Ench that isn't in the meta, unfortunately. Ench is very popular at this current tournament, and you know, if PA was in the meta, we would maybe see it a little bit more because of this Ench being popular. Not that you want to pick your core too much around the enemy supports, but like too, too much, but um, it's certainly good. You know, it's like an added benefit this game for sure. Uh, it's really nice. So team fight's gonna break out, jumps on a moment. What is this positioning from the Nature's Prophet? Are you kidding me? What in the world? All right. <laughs> All right. Team fight's very easy from there. If someone overextends that far, you protect your backline and you jump. It, it's good that Tomato did that though, because a lot of people will be like, I'm Phantom Assassin. I have to go to the backline. No, you don't, as he should pop his BKB on the Dragon Tail there. Yep, very nice, and cleans up the back side of the fight. So no clue why Monet TP'd that far in, but if someone does do that, it's very important that you help out. You have high mobility and low cooldowns. There's no reason not to push a Slark, an Animage, I guess the Nature's Prophet, off of your backline and then look for the key targets that you, you're thinking about going on. In this game, I guess with the fact that he has Shard now, he could just go on DK. However, there is a uh, disruption. So realistically, his best target is Shadow Demon. He can blow him up. And then uh, after Shadow Demon is definitely then uh, the DK or the Nature's Prophet. And now Phantom Assassin truly is a real hero, and we'll see that in this team fight here. This is where the hero begins to look like, okay, I get why people want to play Phantom Assassin. You do have only 1500 HP though, so you gotta be careful and have a little bit of patience. It's pretty important not to begin fights unless a support is dewarding one of your observer wards and you want to blow them up. In that case, it's actually usually a pretty good idea to start the fight, but he's going to jump onto the Furion and just blows him up. So much damage at this point in the game. And with the Blink Strike cast range, he can get over towards uh, the DK and try to take him out. With Shard up in 5 seconds, he could re-engage on the DK a little bit later on, but decides to change his focus onto the Shadow Demon and chops him with a 1200 damage crit. Now in terms of going high ground, your hero, it cannot go high ground at all. You can't go high ground. How? Your blink strike doesn't work, your crit doesn't work, your dagger doesn't work, blur does not help you against long range poke nukes, which is what's typically used to get people off the high ground, so your hero does not go high ground. What you do instead is farm the entire map, because your hero farms really fast at this point of the game, and then eventually when you feel strong or when you have Aegis, you click blur and you run into the enemy because blur is actually insane. It only pops with 400 units. They have to be 400 units away for it to pop, which is super low. Like I cannot express how low that actually is. It's like melee range nearly. So next up, he purchases Aghanim Scepter. If you don't know what Ags does, it lowers the cooldown of Blur to 10 seconds. It also makes Blur be instant, which is pretty damn cool. And on top of that, anytime you get a kill, it refreshes your cooldowns, including your shard, which is really great this game because the shard gets a lot of value for bursting NP and then breaking the Ench and the DK. So it's really awesome if you can get a nice kill onto the Shadow Demon and then blink over to someone else who he also wants to use the shard on. Um, so yeah, I really love the Aghanim's pickup. I think basher rush is a little overrated only because i don't know i feel like if you have to bash them maybe you shouldn't be going on them in a lot of cases like it bash is just it's good on pa right because it gives you some damage it gives you some strength your hero has a lot of attack speed it, it, on any hero like i'm a big hater of basher i think people tend to buy basher too early in your average pub but on pa it's it's a great item on average so i could have seen the basher here it would have been fine rushing abyssal uh after the bkb here totally would have made a lot of sense but you can see with the ags blur with no backup whatsoever just running up the hill and this is what you do this is why the hero is so broken late game at some point in the game yes pa is 
is a stupid hero. However, it takes a long time to get there and it's really hard to get there at this level uh, if the game is harder. But at the same time, when it gets there, man, look, you just get to scout everything. You're like Slark on a crack, right? It's crazy. You one shot the creep waves. You don't have to show ever. So if the enemy really has to be paying attention to ever see where you are. And then if they ever leave the base, like if a support ever tries to deward a hill, they just get completely destroyed, right? And they're just kind of chopping off the map here. It's model farming up the ancient rotation every minute cutting the creep waves that are pushing in. And it looks like they're sort of just waiting for Roshan. And okay, it's actually, oh wow, they, they get the read that they're in the jungle here. As he's gonna jump on the edge, can blow him up, okay. Yep, gonna use the shard to blow him up. Gets another refresh on the kill. Gonna hop over towards the Shattered Demon, take him out. And you can see why it's a good PA game. Two supports that you could blow up. That's always really nice. And eventually he's gonna pick up the Basher. Actually queues up the Satanic after. I kind of would like to see the Abyssal. I feel like it's a pretty good Abyssal game, I'm not gonna lie. Just to be able to lock down something like the NP and the Pango when they're, you know, rolling or if MP BKBs, I just feel like it would be good. I'm surprised he's not opting for that here. I, I mean, Satanic is a great item. And part of the reason Satanic's good this game is it allows you to get rid of uh, Pango Disarm after your BKB ends. So it is really good for that, like actually really, really good for that. So that is something to keep in mind. And the real insane timing as I watch this clip through, I'm going to show it to you guys now, is the Satanic. I mean, he goes from pretty passive and completely unwilling to go high ground to just jumping, I would argue, one of the worst targets <laughs> in the Enchantress. To be fair, it's not too bad because you can actually kill her. A lot of games it's horrible because you can't even kill her, but yeah, just jumps the edge, breaks her. So the attack speed goes completely through, they get the glimpse, kites out a little bit, waits out the disarm. I guess Baboka bought a Halberd on on the edge here and with a couple misses he doesn't burst him and things look kind of awkward here but he's gonna pop the satanic try to heal up a bit does get stunned unfortunately doesn't have his bkb up and they are diving but he creates a lot of space he's super tanky still has the ages so obviously this is about the time to go high ground major item timing spike in the satanic plus ages is definitely a great timer as he's gonna jump onto the d <laughs> oh my god that dk exploded get a crit Wow, he really didn't get a crit there. The DK buys back and blinks in. He still has BKB. He can jump onto the back line. He'll try on the Shattered Demon. Doesn't get all oh, this is actually awkward now. He's got to get out. Oh, uh oh. Gets the blink out. Has Satanic. He could turn. Oh, he couldn't get the hits off. No. All right, we're going to end the video with actually, this is like, this is a dope team fight. You can see in the top of the screen that he got an ultra kill because Dota replay system and things. But he jumps Baboka here. Actually, no, he doesn't. He has the patience here. I think he's a little bit afraid of getting DK stun. He doesn't want to get bursted. It could DK stun in the pango roll and you know, that could be a problem for him. So doesn't want to get bursted. Has to be a little bit of patience because of the fact that they have an instant stun. If they don't have an instant stun and you identify that, you can kind of just go YOLO at this point, right? With Satanic, no instant stun. PA can generally just go crazy. However, he's going to target Baboka in the back. Doesn't blow him up. Maybe should have BKB'd to prevent the disarm from coming out. Probably was praying for a crit or a bash. Didn't get either, which is very unfortunate. But he'll turn on to Baboka with the BKB. Gets the kill, which is going to refresh the cooldowns because of the Axe. Monet is low on the Prophet. Gets the cleave kill onto the Shattered Demon. Blows up the Nature's Prophet. And then refreshes his cooldowns again to kill off the DK on the high ground. Ultra kill. And then, oh, <laughs> look at this hero just schmooze rampage for Tomato. And that is the beauty of the Aghanim Scepter on, on the Phantom Assassin. This hero otherwise would kind of just have to wait three, four, five seconds to go to the next target. But instead, it's just target, target, target. And so that's why when you get ahead on Phantom Assassin, she looks like one of the best heroes on the game. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you can hit your timings and I'll see you the next one. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.